to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In this episode, we are delving into the exciting venture that promises to elevate the town of Mayor Thorpe, Alberta, onto the global stage. During a February regular council meeting, the Council of Mayor Thorpe approved a significant decision that is set to shape the town's future trajectory. Mayor Janet Jabush and acting CAO Karen St. Martin have been granted approval to embark on an international trade mission to India, sponsored in part by Growing Global Immigration Incorporated. This trade mission, rooted in a partnership initiated back in 2023, serves as a beacon for Mayor Thorpe's aspirations to showcase its inherent charm and vast potential to a global audience. The itinerary for the mission encompasses several cities in northern India and those nestled along the west coast of the country. Within each destination, the mayor and CAO will have speaking engagements and workshops drawing the attentions of investors spanning various sectors, including agriculture, manufacturing, textiles, restaurants, franchises, and beyond. Now, in an exclusive interview, our guest for this episode is Mayor Janet Jabush, who will shed light on how this mission to India will not only shape Mayor Thorpe's present, but also pave the way for a prosperous future. We will explore the potential impacts, the strategic importance of global engagement, and the key takeaways that Mayor Jabush envisions for this journey ahead. This is Municipal Affairs. Mayor Jabush, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Um, your council at the February 26th council meeting voted for a unanimous motion to send yourself alongside acting CAO Karen St. Martin on a trade mission to India. Um, before we talk about what you hope to get out of it, how did this trade mission come about? Well, um, it's kind of a circuitous route that brought us here, but um, uh, a number of years ago, CAO St. Martin and I formed a relationship with the then CAO of the town of Drayton Valley. He moved on to Hinton and um, there were there were some inroads made between that CAO and Growing Globe Immigration, which is the immigration consultancy firm that we're connected with. Um, and uh, Growing Globe started doing some work in the town of Whitecourt, which every time they flew from Toronto into Edmonton meant they drove right past my town. So based on some information from the fellow in Hinton, um, formerly from Drayton Valley, and based on the fact that they drove past my town every time they were out this way, one day they decided to make a phone call and... Um, asked to sit down with me and the CAO. So we did that. And um, the relationship started from there. That started about, oh, I'd say maybe last August or so was the first time we met with them. We've kept the lines of communication open with them all along. And at the beginning of this month, and I mean, it, it actually came about very, very suddenly. There had been no talk of a trade mission prior to prior to the beginning of March here, but at the beginning of this month, my CAO got a call from the folks at Growing Globe and they asked us if we would be interested in undertaking a two week trade mission to India. Um, okay, so there's a few things I wanna unpack here and I wanna start by saying, uh, I wanna ask, start by asking this question. What is it about India that Mayor Thorpe could achieve with this trade mission? Because at the end of the day, you had to present to council, the CAO had to present to council to get this approval. Why was it important that India is put on the map for Mayor Thorpe to ensure that there's potentially a benefit to the community with this trade mission coming up? Uh, great question. Um, they... And and I had to educate myself here, Chris, because I I really was to be honest, I wasn't sure either. I'm thinking, what the heck has India got in common with Alberta? I mean, other than people from India like to immigrate here, and I know Albertans have visited India, I wasn't sure what the commonalities were. But I've since come to understand that large swaths of India are very agrarian. So places like rural Alberta really appeal to them from the standpoint of not only immigration, but from the standpoint of investment in 
in things like agri-food production, and India is known for its textiles. Um, Alberta grows some of the best indust industrial hemp in the world. Maybe there's some synergies there. It, like there, there are so many things that I want that I want to try to that I want to try and investigate while we're over there. And if if this comes together the way these folks at Growing Globe have got it laid out, my CAO and I are going to have the chance to talk to four to 600 people. And these are not just average everyday people, Chris. These are people who have gone through a process in India already and been vetted. They've had, they have had to prove that they can pony up the dough to actually be investors, to actually bring value to the whole operation. So yeah, no. I, I had to educate myself because I was a little lost too. Uh, that was my first question to my CAO. Wait, what? Um, but yeah, after, after some conversations with the folks at Growing Globe and, and learning a bit more about rural India, it, there's a lot, what the fellow at Growing Globe told me is that the sensibilities that you would find in the average rural Albertan are very similar to the sensibilities you'd find in a rural Indian, because the societies are both very agrarian in, in certain parts of the, in certain parts of our province anyways according to the news release that came across my desk when this trade mission was announced during this this two week uh trade mission to india you're going to be meeting with representatives from the agricultural sector manufacturer sector textile sector now you talk about that similarities between rural alberta and india this this seems basically would just be up up Mayor Thorpe's line of where they want to take their lo your local economy right now is the agriculture sector, the manufacturing sector, and the textile sector. Is there a key sector that you're looking at when you're in India, or is it going to be a carte blanche? Let's hear what India has to offer our great community of Mayor Thorpe. You know, I think I'm going to keep my mind really, really open on this one, Chris. Um Ideally, where my brain has gone lately, because um, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but I'm also the board chair of the local regional economic development alliance, Growth Alberta. Um, and lots of the conversations we've had around our Growth Alberta table recently have centered around um, value added agriculture and agri food production. So the ag piece is definitely something my ears are going to be perked up for. Um, but uh, man, manufacturing. We could bring some sort of a manufacturing facility um, either right to Mayor Thorpe or somewhere in the surrounding county or somewhere within the region. That's a that's a huge win for everybody. So I'm going to keep my mind open, but but the agri value added ag and agri food, I think, is really, really an interesting piece. So the reason I wanted to talk to you about this, because I'm seeing more and more municipal leaders like yourself who are getting into these so-called trade missions, going to foreign countries to try and attract investments into their local economy. Um, you and I both know that traditionally uh, trade missions are federal or even provincial. Why is it important for to put that Mayor Thorpe on the map? Is it not on the map right now? I'm just trying to figure out why is it important for yourself and the community and the town to have this option to go to India and pitch the local potential economic benefits of your community? Well, speaking purely from a personal perspective, um, I don't know that many federal ministers um, the, the reality, Chris, is that the, the level of politics closest to the people on the ground is mine, municipal, yeah. right? Um, so I can actually, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to interact with people who are just like me. They're not, they don't hold some lofty political position. They're not there with a big, a big, broad political agenda. I'm going to go over there with one thing in mind. What can you do for my community? What can you do for my community? What can you do for the region I live in? And ultimately, what can you do for rural Alberta and rural Canada for that matter? The, the, you know, one of the things that lots of people don't often talk about, and there, you know, there's probably not a lot of people out there that realize it, to be honest with you, Chris. Um, rural Canada is depopulating faster than you can 
um, empty a kitchen sink. It's the, the depopulation that's happening in rural Canada right now should scare everybody because young people are leaving. And when the young people leave, the old, some of the older people are going with them because they're following their grandchildren. And there are more people leaving rural Canada, rural Alberta than there are coming in. Without immigration and without sustained, diverse economic development in rural Alberta and rural Canada, our, this way of life that we enjoy in the rural parts of our, it will disappear. I mean, certainly bringing foreign direct investment to these locations is going to change what it looks like out here. But the way of life will survive. It'll look a little different, but I'll still be able to live in my tiny little town with my gravel roads and the sedate pace of life that I enjoy so very much where we roll up the sidewalks on Sunday afternoon. That's that's why I live where I live. And I want this to survive. I want it to survive for myself and my kids and my grandkids. Any mission like this, any trade mission like this comes with uh, an air of potential negative backlash. And I've got to ask the question because everyone who's watching this or listening to this is going to say, who's paying for this? Who is paying right. for this mission? And uh, I wouldn't be doing my job without asking that question. So that way everyone knows, is it you? Is it the town? Is it a uh, growing globe? Is there a partnership agreement that you're working with all three? Who is paying for this uh, trade mission? And how do you ensure that, and I don't want to say you because- I know you and you seem you you and I've chatted a few times in the last few years. And I, I, I guarantee you, you're not going to India to go party it up. You're going there to actually do work. How do people ensure that they're not just sending you to India to go enjoy yourself for two weeks and come back and say you went on this trade mission? Is there going to be aftermath follow ups with council with the residents of your community to ensure that this trade mission is beneficial, even if it is just having these meetings initially and then coming back later on? 100% Chris, I'm glad you asked the question. So the the mission, the trade mission itself, the airfare, the hotels, all the expenses around the trade mission itself are being fronted by Growing Globe Immigration. The town has invested in some marketing material from our economic development budget. So there's there, there's no additional expenses there, but um, excuse me, we invested in some marketing material, which we do anyways. We use marketing material at trade fairs and all over the place, right? So we put a few dollars into marketing for this trip um, that will be co-branded with Growing Globe. It's it's targeted marketing for the for the trade mission itself. Um, all the spending money that I need is going to come out of my bank account. I'm saving already. I have a trip to the Bottle Depot planned this weekend. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> actually, maybe I'm not kidding. Um, anyway, anyways. Um, so my spending money comes out of my bank account. Um, actually, maybe out of my motorcycle fund. No, I'm not taking, no. Mm. I need parts this year. I need parts. Um, so anyways, um, the only thing, and again, this is not added to the budget. The CAO, who will, by the time we go on this trade mission, be um, back in an economic development officer's role, her wages for our working days and my per diems for my working days. That's the only impact to the town's budget. And it's not unbudgeted. We're taking, um, the plan is to take those amounts out of the economic development budget line item. We're not adding any expenses to the budget that weren't already there. And I'm not gonna, on the days when we're, when we, cause they've got some social things planned. They've got some tourist type activities planned for us. Those are not days I'd get paid for. I'm gonna get paid for the days that I'm in meetings, for the days that I'm traveling between meetings. Um, and it will be the regular per diem as agreed to by my town council. Council agreed to it. Yeah. But what, what's the aftermath? Because any type of uh, conference that I have ever attended while working for a municipality or sitting on a board for a municipality, there's always that follow-up. You come back, you present to council what we learned, what was the takeaways, what were some of the key conversations? Will that be happening after the trade mission? 
110%. I actually had one of the one of the folks that was commenting and all of that craziness on Facebook of which you are so well aware, um, actually said, um, when do we get to hear what the like, when do we get to hear if this if this trip was successful? And I said, I'll come back and drop a full report in your laps as quickly as I can put the thing together. I'll work on it on the plane on the way home. And he came back and he said, I'm not so much interested in the immediate aftermath. I want to know a year down the road, did what you went over there to do actually bear fruit? Now, that's somebody that gets the idea that economic development is a long game. It's not a, a, a game of immediate returns. So he actually understood that when he made that comment. And then his next comment was, I have only one more question. What are you bringing me? <laughs> so, you know. People, some people do have a sense of humor, but no, absolutely. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to bring back a report on this. And I'm, I'm excited to be able to do that. My, my hope is that what, what comes back out of this over the, like over the next say six months following our return from India is that conversations begin with the people we talk to over there. What do, you, what do you need around Marathorpe? What will fit around Marathorpe? What could we bring there that would be well received? And like we talked about a value added agri and agri food and manufacturing, but there are people over there wanting to invest in franchises and, and bring different franchises to smaller municipalities. And Marathorpe's a really attractive place to do that kind of thing because we sit um, at the junction of two pretty significantly busy highways. Highway 43 is the second busiest highway in the province of Alberta now, second only to the corridor between Edmonton and Calgary. And then Highway 22 comes up and bumps right into Highway 43, and that's a pretty busy highway too. It's a great place to put a franchise of just about any kind. So we've got those people interested too. You, when does this trade mission actually take place? Because it wasn't on the press release, and you, mm -hmm. you, you've told me sort of in passing that it's in the next couple of weeks, if not months. But do you do we have a firm date of when uh, yourself and acting CEO Karen St. Martin will be actually heading over to India, or is it still tentative right now? Well, initially we were looking at somewhere around mid-April, but the um, national elect election season. In India happens right around the same time. And um, to use the terms I have heard in the past, it can be a bit tumultuous. So the decision was made to push it out a little bit. And um, it looks like our departure date from Pearson in Toronto is May 8th now. We'll fly, um, Karen and I will fly to Toronto a couple of days early because we've got some prep work and stuff to do there. They want to, um, they want to introduce us to more of the Growing Globe team because there's going to be, there's going to be several of their group going over there with Karen and I. Um, so they want to introduce us to that team. We're going to have a look at the marketing material and work on, um, work on a promotional video, I think. They have that set up down there for us to do a promotional video. So we're going to work on that in those two days. And then on, on May the 8th, we board a plane for the 15-hour flight to um, the airport in Amritsar, India. Um, before I let you go, I'm going to have to ask to put this on the record here for a second because I'm cautious of time. And um, hopefully, once you do get back and you've settled in and you've got that report, you'll grace us with another interview so we can catch up on what has actually happened. So people who are listening to this across Alberta, but also across Canada and around the world can say, oh, that this type of trade mission is worth it while it's still in the short term, like you said, that, that one resident did talk to you about. Uh, maybe though this can sort of spark into more municipalities thinking about this type of trade mission to other countries, not just India, but other communities as well. A hundred percent, Chris, I'd love to come back on and talk about it. And, you know, you mentioned earlier that, that you're, you're aware of other municipalities that are undertaking these kinds of trade missions, wouldn't it be great to maybe have a round table with a few of them and, you know, bring, bring three or four of us together that have actually been able to go on these trade missions. And, and then we can, we can really give people a feel for why it's important. 
And you you took the words out of my mouth there, Mayor Jablush. Uh, Janet, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Always a pleasure to sit down and talk to you. Good luck on this upcoming trade mission to India. Uh, hopefully you don't have to use any money out of your motorcycle funds, but I'm assuming because you're very, you, you, you ensure that you can do it on your own. You might have to dive into that motorcycle fund a little bit. Yeah, well, and you know, I, I'll do what I'll do what I have to, but, um, I got, I got another six weeks or so to collect more bottles, so I should be okay. <laughs> Now, if this episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all the diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs, like you saw right now, to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews, and even our eye-opening exploration on the decisions local governments make in the political trenches local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.